We would like to welcome the 2024 Catholic Women of the Year. and 24 class of the Catholic Women of the Year. Okay, ladies, you can take your seats. Go ahead. Thank you. That was the definition of beauty. Good evening. My name is Steve Rupp, and I'm honored to be the MC tonight. I work for the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, and I'm also honored to be the president of Missouri Right to Life. And I thank all of you for coming tonight. I especially thank all of you for nominating these beautiful women for Catholic Women of the Year. And I would like to bring up Karen Messler, the 2023 Woman of the Year, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Karen, please welcome Karen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic You may be seated. Good evening. As he said, my name is Karen Messler, and I was very humbled to be here last year at this time. A little nervous, fought a little bit about having to come, not sure I should really be here, but I was here, and it was a beautiful night. I would like to thank the St. Joseph Catholic Radio Lou Cartesi and her associate, associates for the honor to speak briefly tonight. Last year at this time, I heard many impactful stories, stories that touched my heart and I was moved by each one. I was in such awe of all those who heard God's voice and listened and acted. I felt in great company. I was thanking God for all those words of each person when my name was announced and I sat there and my family said, you need to go up. <laughs> so I did, I came up and I did receive the prestigious award and it was truly surreal. It was a delight to have my whole family present and the pastors of my parish. I need those people in my life for prayer and support to carry out the mission that God has called me to do. The experience was gratifying. I had the opportunity to speak about marriage and mission on the St. Joseph radio. Got an opportunity to share the not-for-profit Alleluia Baskets. And also get to see the many ways that people responded to Catholic Woman of the Year. Some never even heard that it was a thing. But tonight, I stand here 
after meeting several of the women in the other room and just in awe of how beautiful they are, not just physically, but in their hearts and in their minds and how they've been called by God to do work for him and how they're carrying it out. I am truly all in all again tonight. While this act of serving looks different to each one of us, we all know we're doing the right thing. It's all done with great love and to give all the honor to God. Each one does amazing work and puts others before themselves. We thank you for doing that. We thank the Blessed Mother for being our mother, our guide, that person we call upon when things aren't going the right way and that we're, we're always answered. I pray each woman tonight will know they are dearly appreciated and greatly valued by those here. May God continue to bless you, each one tonight and all the years to come. Thank you. And it is also my honor to introduce our, our speaker for the invocation, Arch St. Louis Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky. Good evening, everyone. And such a joy and a privilege and pleasure to be with you here this evening as we come together for our 2024 St. Joseph Evangelization Network, St. Joseph's Radio Woman of the Year. And it is indeed a privilege and a pleasure to be able to meet each one of our women, our nominees, and also to be able to come together to pray with you and to ask God's blessing upon them upon their families, and upon all of those who help them in serving the Lord with such joy in the ways that they do. So let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, you are the source of all of our gifts and our talents. And in his life here on earth, and from his throne in heaven, your son challenges us to use those gifts and talents for your greater glory. We thank you for each of these Catholic women of the year who share your love, your joy, and who reach out to others in so many ways to be a blessing to their lives. We thank you for their families and friends who gather here this evening, for all who support them in all that they do. And Lord our God, we ask for your blessing upon this evening and upon our food. Because as we come together, we do so in your name, for your greater glory and honor. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Archbishop. So I'd like to explain very quickly the judging process. One woman will be chosen tonight to represent the Archdiocese in 2024 as a Catholic Woman of the Year. The judging process is gut-wrenching. I was a judge at one time. It's hard. You're reading these bios, and when you read the bios, the bios have been redacted, so you don't know the person's name, you don't know their parish. You just read all these incredible things that they've done. And, and they're scaled on a scale of one to 10. There are 10 criteria of, of community service and, and service to the parish, et cetera, et cetera. And as I was reading them, I gave everybody a 10 on everything. I mean, they were so good. All of them were so incredible. So I want you to know that this is not a competition. Every one of the women that you met tonight are, are Catholic Women of the Year, every one of them. Yes, yes. I would ask those who have never been to this dinner before to raise your hand. Good, because this story is for you because I tell the story every year. <laughs> but it's a great story about the fact that this isn't a competition. We had a, a table right here and the fellow was a, a truck driver, an over the road truck driver for his career. And he had his family all around him, his grown children were with him and his grandchildren. And as we were reading the bios, one of the bios that we read one of the fellows was recognized by the last three popes. 
And one of his daughters leaned over to him and said, Dad, how many popes you got on your resume? And he said, none. She said, you're sunk. This isn't a competition. Again, every woman that is here tonight that's being recognized is a Catholic Woman of the Year. So I would like to bring up Archbishop Rosansky again to stand with the women as they are announced and, and receive a, a recognition from the Archbishop and some pictures with the Archbishop. I would also like to bring up, and this is how she describes herself, Catholic Karen from Our Ladies Inn. Karen Nolkemper. Now, oh, you're playing a video? Oh, that's right, they're playing a video now. Sorry about that. Go right ahead. It's not a long video. of radio shining bright guiding hearts with truth and light faithful voice in times of need spreading hope like planted seed every story every song helping souls to carry on in the silence, in the night, St. Joseph leads us to the light. Feel the spirit rising high, St. Joseph, radio by our side. In the whispers of the day, bring joy in every way. Raise your voice. Harmony, join the song for you and me. Saint Joseph hears our prayer with his love. We'll find what's fair. Feel the spirit rising high, Saint Joseph. Radio by our side. hearts we gather near listening with reverent cheer saint joseph radio divine guiding us with love so fine
Ladies, we will mention your name, and if you can come up to the stage while we're reading your bios, that would be wonderful. We're going to start with Ginger Basil. Influenced by her faith-filled family as she was growing up, Ginger had continued to live a life of faith, prayer, and service. This includes meetings and activities with the Legion of Mary, visiting the homebound, a parish sacristan, scheduling hours of adoration, and more. Greatly impacted by the chirp retreat, daily mass, and holy hours, Ginger is involved with the seed bearers and their youth group, helping those in need with yard work, repairs, buildings, etc. She is also in formation with the Third Order of Carmelites, like her grandmother, who witnessed her faith by carrying a rosary with her all the time. Ginger thought of a sm that's a small effort to motivate others to the reality of acknowledging the reverence due to the holy sacrifice of the mass by wearing a veil whenever she attends Mass. She described the heart of the church as one having a heart to help. From her experience, Ginger sees that the best way to pass on the faith is by example. Thank you, Ginger. You are a heart of our church. Our next nominee is Sarah Buffa. Sarah first grew in her faith, in her life of faith, through the example of her devout family. She recalls times when her grandfather was driving and the car stopped running, so he turned the car off and asked everyone to pray a decade of the rosary, and he, then he turned the car back on and it started up every time. <laughs> Diagnosed with a brain disease at an early age, Sarah describes the different stages, multiple surgeries, and even a time when she was bedridden, unable to walk, speak, or write. With beautiful, encouraging quotes from scripture, she describes these experiences. Working through these experiences, Sarah graduated from college with a master's degree in social work, enabling her to branch out to many communities, such as the Corinthian Homeless Ministry, her parish youth group, several Zoom study groups, Fossetti Sports, and much more. Sarah is often asked to speak for local and national brain injury association events, providing others mentorship to families with children who have special needs. Through these services, Sarah quotes from the book of Romans, Romans 1.12, that we may mutually be encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Thank you, Sarah. You are a heart of our church. Dr. Ruby Casino. Combining her volunteer activities along with her medical practice, Dr. Ruby says, I want to evangelize the redemptive value of suffering. For over 20 years, she has provided comprehensive health care to both insured and uninsured individuals, priests, religious, and communities. 
She has also participated in medical missions across the U.S. and the Philippines. As a lay associate of the Society of the Mother of Peace, Dr. Ruby has organized retreats and provided medical services to all, joined them on days of recollection, and volunteered for others in the soup kitchen. Under the guidance of Cardinal Regali and Cardinal Burke, Dr. Ruby and her late husband established a local chapter of a pontifical lay movement devoted to the two hearts. Over the past 24 years, they have enthroned more than 500 homes and families of the St. Louis area and initiated an all-night vigil to the two hearts, which has expanded to six parishes. To pass on the faith, Dr. Ruby says, we need to bring our children to the Eucharist daily and entrust them to our Blessed Mother. Thank you, Dr. Ruby. You are a heart of our church. Pat Dino. Pat, the many struggles in dark times of a young mother that Pat experienced have brought forth an even greater light to the multiple areas of service Pat has given to so many. Pat has been involved in numerous organizations ministering to those in need. As an example, Pat founded a prison ministry for women. And this ministry included Pat helping paying for buses to take the children of the prisoners to visit their mothers each month and providing birthday parties for them. Even after the women were released, Pat continued this beautiful ministry, sent supplies and food every week to the halfway house for those who had nowhere else to live. She also adopted families for Thanksgiving, taking them shopping for the family Thanksgiving dinner. As a pro-lifer, Pat would often carry signs at Planned Parenthood and even help pay for ultrasounds across the street. According to Pat, it is the work of the Holy Spirit that motivates her to do the important work of fostering love and care for all of God's people. Thank you, Pat. You are the heart of our church. Tina Furter. Tina grew up in a faith-filled family, especially influenced by the example of both grandmothers. As an adult, years of scripture studies also had a strong influence on her moral and spiritual compass. Primary caregiver for her mother-in-law while on hospice, Tina moved her into her home, giving up her job to be available to her 24-7. Tina now serves with the Catholic Renewal Center through prayer, genera generational healing, and the Jonah Prayer Ministry, for which she serves as Archdiocesan Coordinator for 70 plus parishes with over 550 trained parish ministers. In addition, Tina serves her parish in many ways. She is a Eucharistic minister and caritas to the homebound. Companions of the Lost and Found Sheep, Director of the Axe Retreat, and crochets for the Prayer Shawl Ministry. Motivated to serve out of gratitude for blessings in her life, Tina says, out of gratitude, I must give back. There is so much joy in serving the Lord and being an eyewitness to God's love made visible. Nothing compares to that. Thank you, Tina. You are a heart of our church. Diane Gerard. Watching her grandparents pray the rosary each morning was a great influence in Diane's life. Also, no matter how many years have passed, they would always ask whether she'd been to church on Sunday, assuring that their faith life was essential to the family. Even after her first year of marriage, her grandmother commented, one down, 49 to go, implying that marriage is forever. Currently, Diane serves her parish and community by continuing her 30-year service as a Eucharistic minister. She is also a team member of the CHIRP program, is involved with telephone visits with homebound friends in multiple states, and organizes and participates in pilgrimages to Medjugorje. Her faith is especially notable in her published books, Choosing Heaven and Stations of Hope about which she is often called to share the content of these books as a speaker for parishes and other groups. 
Diane is convinced that in order to pass on the faith, you must first care about the person, then do something that shows you care, and then lead them to God through prayer and his lessons in the Bible. Thank you, Diane. You are a heart of our church. Meg Huber. Meg's life of service began with her family when even as a child she learned to not only welcome people coming to their door for food or water, but to also invite them into their home as guests. Now her volunteer activities include more than 20 years of service with St. Martha's Guild for Battered Women and Children, as well as working with her parish to assist an immigrant family resettled in the United States. Her work with the Society of St. Vincent de Paul began 24 years ago, which has included many projects such as starting a soup kitchen for a parish and serving many years as president to serve those in need. Her experience in chairing and running the National Walk for the Poor led her to bring that same idea for her parish as an opportunity for those serving the poor to share a prayer, a meal, and fellowship. Describing her years of service, May considers it a privilege to meet and serve those in need. Thank you, Meg. You are a heart of our church. Nancy Lloyd. Nancy. Currently serving on the Archdiocesan Christian Initiation Team, Nancy assists in providing training for the parish RCIA teams, as well as facilitating the right of election at the cathedral. She also serves as a catechist, Eucharistic minister, and consultant for the facilitation of RCIA retreats, along with many other parish activities. Blessed with parents and family who always put the church and the faith at the center of the family life, Nancy grew to really understand what it truly means to be faithful men and women. This brought her to a life of greater service, such as volunteering at Room at the Inn, the St. Louis Food Bank, visiting and preparing meals for a friend who was in hospice during the last three years of her life, and much more. Nancy has a gift of using difficulties and disappointments as a stepping stone for greater service. One example when, when was experiencing the death of her parents, she observed how meaningful it was to have people just come and share her grief. Therefore, when there is ever a need, Nancy always finds a way to help. Thank you, Nancy. You are a heart of our church. Carol Ann Murphy. <laughs> Carol is driven to a life of constant services, not only in gratitude for God's love, but also the understanding that we are called to share that love with others. Currently, Carol serves her parish in at least 18 different ways. An officer of the Legion of Mary, she started a food pantry where she cooks meals for many parish groups and coordinates dinners for priest meetings. Carol is also involved in the parish liturgy, St. Vincent de Paul Society, and the WINGS program for parish functions. As a dynamic, dynamic leader of her parish, Carol is always there to work with, with what it takes to carry out her ideas. Not only has she started many events and traditions for her parish, but Carol reaches out to the needy of her community. One interesting parish event is called Ask the Padre for people needing answers to questions about their faith. With so many activities, Carol has a signature block which says, time has a way of expanding when you're doing God's work. Thank you, Carol. You are a heart of the church. <laughs> Anne Maloney. <laughs> Accepting this nomination in tribute to her mother, who was unwaver whose unwavering faith in God was a lifelong inspiration. Anne continues to serve our church and community in countless ways. Anne started a memorial for the unborn at her parish when one of her children was stillborn. Now about 50 babies are memorialized there. Serving as a parish lector and Eucharistic minister for the past 15 years, she also is a member of the Sierra Club for which she started a Facebook page to affirm fostered vocations to the priesthood and religious life. 
and currently serves as president and administrator of a Facebook page for the Jefferson County Federated Rep Republican Women focused on pro-life advocacy. In addition, Ann offers inspiring spiritual encouragements through social media on her Facebook page titled Motivating Mom 9. She has also served on Covenant Radio as a host for many topics of faith and interviews with doctors, priests, bishops, and others on behalf of life. Finally, Anne describes that her driving force is a desire to live in the will of God. Thank you, Anne. You are a heart of our church. Kathy Swanigan. Serving as a Eucharistic minister for the past 10 years, Kathy is also part of the leadership team of the Alpha program of her parish. Not only did her Committee on Adoration host missionary disciples these past two years, but she also attended and served as a team leader for the ACTS retreat program. With a background experience of service as a nurse in the Air Force, Kathy, her husband, and children relocated every three years to different countries and states. Given her faith, first formed through her family, where prayer was essential to their daily lives, and then having served on her parish evangelization committee, Kathy has used her experiences to lead women's retreats on topics of spiritual fitness, forgiveness, healing, virtue, and much more. According to Kathy, the church is as loving as we are. We are taught how to love our neighbor share that love, come back hungry to receive Jesus who fills us, and then he asks us to go out and share his love again. Thank you, Kathy. You are a heart of our church. Patricia Nesbitt. A few of the many ways Patricia serves her parish are, <clears throat> excuse me, as the parish sacristan, Eucharistic minister for the homebound and hospitalized, and leading the rosary prior to each daily mass. Also with her family, Patricia makes rosaries, distributing them and miraculous medals to anyone who would like to have them. The family also celebrates our Blessed Mother and Jesus' birthdays, as you would any birthday, with cake and singing as a tradition. She leads a parish rosary rally each month, holding signs designating certain intentions, such as America Needs Fatima, or end abortion. As the Archdiocesan representative for EWTN, Patricia made sure that each parish had information about the network through the media ministries and continues to send notices for bulletins about special programming. Patricia makes sure to carry booklets, holy cards, and rosaries to distribute whenever she goes to help others on their journey of faith. Patricia says, when I do something for others, I am doing something for God. Thank you, Patricia. You are a heart of our church. Ann Whitman. Formed to a life of service by the inspiring example of her parents and grandmother, Ann is continually involved in countless opportunities to reach out to people in need and to share her faith. In 2021, Anne started the Humankind STL organization to help Afghan refugees arriving in the St. Louis area, helping them get settled by meeting, meeting some of their urgent needs. Her fundraising provided 50 vehicles, finding jobs, getting refugees enrolled in ESL classes, and providing opportunities for women to use their sewing and cooking skills. She also mentors a teen leadership board toward creating meaningful service for St. Louis teens, which currently includes over 250 teens and 17 schools. In addition, Anne is also called upon to speak at schools and groups and events in order to share the stories and needs of the refugees, as well as describing ways to help and how to get further involved. Among other projects, Anne serves her parish as a scout, retreat, and chirp leader, working with the Junior League of Mary, which she founded, and then as a volunteer for the Parish School of Religion, and much more. 
Thank you, Anne. You are a heart of our church. Bonnie Euro. Bonnie is a woman of faith that radiates in all that she does. She leads a Bible study, and as a member of the Parish Ladies Guild, she joins the fundraisers for the poor and maintains the potted flowers of the parish garden. Bonnie is also a caregiver for someone with mental health issues. Wednesdays have customarily been her family night when all gather to watch Catholic movies or shows followed by discussions and going on field trips and retreats. Bonnie serves her parish on the evangelization committee and as an usher with the hospitality committee. She also serves on the catechesis of the Good Shepherd, chirp retreats, the Jonah prayer ministry, and more. Supporting her husband in his diaconate formation program, Bonnie participated in all the courses and retreats that she could, even if not required. Bonnie sees that by her example, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the love she offers to those in need are important ways to pass the faith on. Thank you, Bonnie. You are a heart of our church. Another round of applause for all of our candidates. Now I'd like to bring Archbishop to the podium to announce the 2024 Woman of the Year. But I'm very happy to uh, honor as uh, Catholic Woman of the Year for 2024, Dr. Ruby. Dr. Ruby, thank you. Normally, we would read more of her, of her accomplishments, but instead of doing that, we're going to let her daughter, Sister Gianna, do that for us. Thank you, all of you and Your Excellency, uh, for this wonderful night where we're given the opportunity to say thank you to all of these women who are the heart of the church. When um, I was asked and interviewed um, about my mom and her standing in the church, I was asked to write a few words as all of our sponsors were. So I wanted to share that with you tonight, but I want you all to know that this, I'm speaking on behalf of all women and all of you. So I, Sister Gianna, with a heart full of reverence and gratitude, on behalf of my sisters of the leaven of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, they came from Alabama to support um, Dr. Casino tonight. Thank you. Father Placid, who is the founder of the Society of the Mother of Peace. They are represented with his community here tonight as well. And alongside sponsor, Mrs. Mary Hodge and her husband, Mr. Hodge, lay members of the Alliance of the Holy Family International, who are here tonight as well. And of course, uh, members of our Filipino American community. It is with unwavering conviction and deep admiration that we present Dr. Casino as a candidate for Catholic woman. In the tapestry of my life, Dr. Casino has been a radiant thread, a sentinel of the Catholic Church, a champion for the unborn, an advocate for the sanctity of life. Her voice has resonated on Catholic radio, television, and bustling streets, proclaiming boldly that the Catholic faith is the truth. I know she would lay down her life for this truth, a testament to her boundless dedication. I find that her humility mirrors that of our Blessed Mother, she never seeks the limelight, but embraces the quiet sanctuary of anonymity. Oh, sorry, anonymity. 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 <laughs> yeah, thank you, Your Excellency. Yes, this, um, all of this, this dinner, and everyone who came, this was actually a surprise. My mom did not know that she was nominated. Uh, so this was really, um, I'm so touched by everyone's support. She, as a beacon of compassion, bears the suffering of others with a gentle grace, she would prefer to alleviate their burdens rather than seek accolades of her own. I know that she refuses to write anything of her own elevation, so we would like to elevate her deeds tonight. 
I have witnessed her fervent defense of the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I have seen her and all of her supporters and friends gather families with tender care, guiding them towards confession, praying the rosary, having them partake in the Holy Mass with unwavering devotion my entire life, especially in her devotion to the Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart of Mary. Her daily commitment to an hour of adoration, amidst a life teeming with responsibilities, speaks to her profound prayerfulness. It is with her steadfast example that I found the courage to embrace my own vocation as a religious sister. Her life lived with unwavering fidelity as a wife, a mother, and a doctor has been a testament to the vocation of service. She not only saves lives, but ardently strives to save souls. And her love for the priesthood knows no bounds. I would like to recognize the presence of our clergy here tonight because I have seen her tend to priests with a tender care that mirrors the love of Christ himself. Whether priests were ill, elderly, or in prison, she tends to priests with a devotion that transcends mere duty. My mother holds all priests close to her heart as if they were Christ walking among us. In Dr. Casino, we see a soul whose life is a luminous beacon of faith, humility, and boundless love. She is without a doubt a paragon of what it means to be a Catholic woman. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd like to say a few words. But coming from me, you know, those few words would lengthen to paragraphs. So thank you so much for this award, which I believe belongs to every woman in every generation, reflecting the feminine genius of the Blessed Mother. Human rebellion continues, especially in our, in our time today, which is magnified by the culture of death. But we should not be, we should, we should not be afraid because in the forefront of the army of Christ are the priests. For me, they are the real macho men who denied human desires and passions and the world in order to sanctify us through masses, sac sacraments, and spiritual formations, and much more. Allow me to talk about the Alliance of the Two Hearts, which started in 2000 in St. Louis, is having, having the approval of uh, First Cardinal. Regali, and then Cardinal Burke, and then Archbishop Carlson, and then now Archbishop Brzezanski. It was also in the year 2000 that we started the Communion of Reparation Vigil. It's an overnight, first Friday, first Saturday, vigil for the Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart. It was in the All Saints Church, as uh, the parish priest then was Father Heyer, who started the, the reparation vigil. He is the midnight celebrant for about more than five years. And then uh, in 2008, in Ascension Chesterfield, Father Aaron Nord initiated the communion of reparation vigil. And of course, without the midnight celebrants, we cannot complete the vigil reparation. He was then transferred, I mean, he was, he was then transferred to Rome, not really transferred, but moved to Rome for canonical studies. And then the Midnight Torch was carried over by Father Brian Hector, who's here with us, and um, for about three years before he was transferred to another parish. Um, and then um, it was uh, Father Matthew who took over. And then in 2011, St. Matthew, with the help of Father Port, also uh, approved the vigil. And then, of course, our 
Midnight Celebrant now is uh, Father James Mickler. All this time, the advisor was uh, Bishop Herman, assisted by Monsignor Grisidek. And then all of the priests here, about 95%, had celebrated either the first Friday Mass or the first Saturday a Mass for the Immaculate Heart. So thank you for your presence, dear priests. Thank you. You have given my spiritual and my physical immune system a boost. So the feminine genius, perfectly exemplified by Mother Mary, and the holy, I will call it, quote and unquote, holy machismo in the human Jesus, definitely will propel all of us and sustain us in our earthly pilgrimage towards the kingdom, the heart of the Trine God, where Mother Mary, Saint Joseph, all the angels and saints dwell. Thank you so much. I know on behalf of all of us, we thank uh, Lou Cortese for all that she does, not only for this evening uh, and having us come together in such a wonderful way, but also for all that uh, St. Joseph's Evangelization Network and St. Joseph Radio does to get out the news of our Catholic faith and living our Catholic faith. My congratulations to Dr. Ruby, but also to each one of our ladies who were nominated this evening, your witness to us of being able to take the love of Christ in your hearts and make that love present in our world transforms our world as Jesus himself would want us to transform the world. We pray that our Blessed Mother will continue to have her mantle over you, to watch over you and bless you and we thank each one of you, particularly members of their families and their friends who support them so that they can do all that they do in promoting the gospel of Christ, in reaching out to transform the lives of others and to give us great hope in this world that the love of Christ shines through the darkness and gives to us that light of faith and that light of hope. So thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Archbishop. And now a few words from Lou Cortese, the president of St. Joseph Radio. The one responsible for all the glitches. But you know, that's how God works, isn't it? He does keep me humble. And he does it to many of us, doesn't he? Uh, I'd like to thank the Archbishop and, and our priests that are here that have always supported this ministry. And the priests that are here visiting, sisters, thank you so much for joining us and getting a vision of what it means to serve the church faithfully. Ladies, you're amazing. You are the light of the church. You are the ones that make it happen in a very quiet way. And it was such a task convincing you to say yes. <laughs> you know, it was so important for us to recognize you. And I, I can't thank you enough for allowing us to do that. And I pray that you think of others that should be recognized next year. Our, our man of the year will be in March. Please think of, of someone to nominate. The recognition is not just 
for you, the individual, but it's also for those people that are here that have a mission, but they don't know what it is yet. And you may be giving them the light as you're passing it on, you may be giving them the light to their mission. So we do have a mission. You know, it's Our Lady of Sorrows. And I think of Our Lady and, and, and the pain that she's going through because of what we're, what we're going through as a country. There is much sorrow, but the only answer, the only answer is Almighty God. And thanks be to God, we have him in our Catholic Church, the body, blood, soul, and divinity. And those that are visiting, if you're not Catholic, pay us a visit. Come and visit St. Joseph Radio. We guarantee out of this world benefits and fire insurance. <laughs> and we use good old Catholic guilt to get volunteers. <laughs> so we, we have a great ministry of, of TV, radio. I thought I was coming here to retire from California. Tell God your plans. Anyway, I want to thank you again for allowing us to pay tribute to you. And thank you for sharing the light. And we ask for your prayers. And come and visit St. Joseph Radio. I promise not to tie you down. However, I will get the commitment for at least 10 years. So please come and visit. Thank you so much. God bless you. And now we're going to give some prizes away. And your generosity just helps this ministry. We're a volunteer ministry. And we're just, after 42 years, I was two years, when, I was two years old when we started. <laughs> it's been 42 years since we started this ministry. And it started in California. And what a gift it has been. But we have much more work to do. And since I can't retire, you can't either. And 95 is the new middle age. So thank you again for being here, and God bless you. Thank you, Lou. OK, don't forget, next year, um, to think about somebody to nominate for Woman of the Year. And the Man of the Year is on March 30th. So think about somebody to nominate also for the Man of the Year dinner. Now, to close us in prayer is Monsignor Matthew Midas. Monsignor Midas. You know, the purpose of St. Joseph Radio is to teach the Catholic faith. So we gotta do something academic here, just very briefly. In the form of one trivia question, Bible, Bible study. We all know Pontius Pilate. He's mentioned in all the Gospels. We pronounce his name every Sunday in the Creed. And we all know that he was the governor of Judea in Jesus' time. Who was his second in command, his lieutenant governor? It's an easy one, co-pilot. <laughs> Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, when you walked the earth, you said that the fields were shining for harvest. And even as you hung upon the cross, you said your work was finished. It was time to gather the harvest. Before you left this world, the very last words you said were the great mission, commissioning your apostles to go forth and make disciples of all nations. May we, fortified by the graces of this evening, Go forth boldly to complete the work you began 2,000 years ago, walking in the footsteps of the holy ones and the great ones who came before us. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you, stay with you forever. Amen. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. Good. Thank you all, and God bless you. Have a safe journey home.